In this podcast episode, I'm going to talk about how listening to someone else's OCD struggles helps me come to terms with mine. Like me or someone that struggles with their mental health. Yes, I know it's a pain in the ass, but you are not alone, as you'll see from this podcast. Hi there, my name is James, and thank you so much for checking out my podcast. I'm a happy married father of three, and we live on the south coast of the UK, just outside Brighton. I'm on a mission to support people who, like me, struggle with OCD. The thing that I've found that's given me the most comfort, or a lot of comfort, when dealing with this, is hearing about other people's experiences of how OCD affects certain areas of their life, and maybe some suggestions of what they do to combat it. After doing a CBT course that I did with the NHS that I was referred to by my GP, in 2010, I was told that I had pure OCD. This made a lot of sense. And if anything, it was actually a bit of a relief to realise that I wasn't completely insane and I did actually have a mental illness. Because human beings are unique, everyone's experience of OCD will be unique. I listened to a podcast about a mother who was talking about her daughter's experience of living with OCD. Now, as a parent, what's worse than struggling with OCD? Probably watching your children struggle with OCD. Like the daughter mentioned in the talk last night, I struggle with driving. There are things in life I have to do and driving my children to and from school is one of them. I have to do it. My wife works full time as a teacher and leaves the house at half six. I work from home, which means I'm in charge of dropping off and picking up. I like this girl in the story. I don't think I can ever remember a situation where I've driven someone without convincing myself that I might have run someone over or hit a curb and damage something or someone. It's constant. And that constant work on top of everything else I have to do as a father of three can at times just feel overwhelming. So in this talk, the mother talked about her daughter who only works three miles away, so only has to drive three miles, had convinced herself that she'd knocked someone over and had left them in the ditch to die. The problem with OCD is that the false memories that you have are so vivid and are so real that you really can't differentiate between what is real and what is not. And that feeling of not being completely in control of your mind is terrifying because you feel like, well, if I can't differentiate between what I did and didn't do, am I basically going insane? Am I basically losing control of my mind? Which is a really scary place to be. The thing with OCD, it's not rational. So checking the car for any damages, for looking underneath the car, or for example, this morning when I see a plastic bag in front of me, stopping in the road and waiting until it's blown across so I can drive, just in case there was something in that plastic bag, doesn't help. It doesn't reassure me. And in the story, the mother talked about how actually, from experience, the one thing she's learned that actually helps her daughter is to call out the OCD. Because if you confront it and deal with it rationally and calmly, it loses some of its power. So the mother was like, yeah, okay, maybe you should get in the car and go and drive for three miles. Maybe you should go and hand yourselves into the police. And this is something I have found to be true. If you actually call yourself out, well, yeah, maybe you did run over a plastic bag. What's the worst that can happen? Okay, maybe you did clip a curb. What's the worst that would happen? For starters, you probably know because you probably hear something. You're so acutely aware of everything going on around you, I imagine your senses might pick that one up. Instead of getting cross and frustrated with yourself for having these thoughts, acknowledge the thoughts. I think OCD is very similar to a very frustrated and persistent and grumpy and cross toddler who wants a biscuit. Ignoring their request of wanting a biscuit is not going to stop them asking for another biscuit. You're much better engaging, grabbing the nettle and reasoning. And you know what? At the end of the day, it's just a biscuit. So my advice for anyone who's struggling with OCD is research it, investigate it, listen to other people's stories about it. Because the story I listened to last night of a young lady who's driven back from work and convinced herself she's run someone over, well, that wasn't me, but I've done that. I've convinced myself when I've gone through the lights that have changed from green to amber that maybe in that moment I caused some accident and I need to turn around and go and check that area. Instead of getting cross or frustrated, as she get, all right, I'm going to get in the car and go. I'd be surprised if you did get as she get in the car and the go, because I'm pretty sure sometime between you making that decision and actually going to get in your car, I think something will kick in. And you go, 
actually, I think I would know. I really hope you got some of this podcast, and I'm going to link the talk that I watched in the show notes. And if you found a way to combat OCD and be brave enough to talk to me on a podcast, please email me at mydadmissions at gmail.com. As I said, I'm generally trying to create a community that supports people who struggle with OCD. And like any group or community, it's much more interesting when there's two-way conversations. So if you have a question for me on anything to do with OCD, or you just want to say hi, that would be hugely appreciated. And if you like what I'm trying to do and want to support this channel, please subscribe and give me a like. As a very small YouTuber trying to compete with massive YouTubers and trying to get my message to support other OCD sufferers out there, if you could be kind enough to watch this video to the end, that would be hugely appreciated. I hope wherever you are in the world, you're okay. And take good care of yourself. Like me or someone that struggles with their mental health Yes, I know it's a pain in the ass But you are not alone As you'll see from this podcast